The modern era of computers has brought us things like Facebook, eBay, Netflix, World of Warcraft, broadband internet, wireless computing, and more. But did anyone ever stop to ask what we've lost over the last 30 years? Watch how quickly I could reboot a Commodore 64. There you go, it was that easy. When you were done with your application, here's how you closed out of it. Look at the original manual of the Commodore 64. Notice that it contains actual information about the computer. Here you can see how to write programs, advanced basic, graphics and sound programming. Here you can see a pinout diagram of all the expansion ports. You can find troubleshooting information. And you even get a complete schematic diagram of the computer along with repair and diagnostic information. And if you can't find what you need, there's an actual index in the back to help you find it. Now let's open up a brand new Dell and see what kind of manual it comes with. It looks kind of thin. What's on the inside? Oh, just a bunch of legal information and license agreements. Really a waste of paper as I doubt anyone reads this stuff. Also, it comes with a diagram showing you how to plug in a USB cable and an Ethernet cable. Who needs this? I thought we all learned how to put round pegs in round holes and square pegs in square holes when we were babies. Any elementary school kid could learn to write programs in BASIC on an old computer. No extra software was required, no schooling required. All that was needed was the manual that came with the computer. In fact, they are ready to be programmed from the moment you turn them on. Just start typing away. Here's what tech support was like back in the 1980s. Okay, so how do I fix this? So what I need you to do is type in edlin config.sys. Now I'm going to need you to change line two to say files equals 30, and that's the equal sign. Okay. okay, now go ahead and hit E to exit and save the file, and give that a try and see if it works. Hey, that worked, that fixed it right up. Thanks. And here's how tech support is now. Thank you for calling technical support. This is Bob Johnson. How may I assist you? Hi, my computer just locked up and it caught on fire and there's smoke coming out of it. Have you installed any third party applications? What do you mean third party? Have you installed any software that did not come with the computer? For example, have you installed Microsoft Office? Yes, I have Microsoft Office. Who does it? This is most likely the cause of your problem. If you would please uninstall Microsoft Office, I'm sure your computer will start working properly again. How do I uninstall Microsoft Office when the screen is black? Try writing ScanDisk and Defrag, and if that doesn't work, you should call Microsoft Technical Support for assistance with Microsoft Office. Thank you for calling. Have a nice day. If your computer broke, you could just replace the actual computer and all of your data would still be safe and sound on your diskettes or cassette tapes. Installation of software was very fast. Option number one is direct install into the computer. And option number two was to put the diskette into your diskette box. There, software installed. In the past, upgrading your computer always came with a sense of great anticipation to get it home, open the box, and see what it could do. Each new generation of computers offered something truly amazing compared to the previous generation. Wow, look at those cool graphics. Wow, look at those amazing graphics. Wow, look at these amazing graphics. Wow, look at these amazing graphics.
amazing graphics and games. Wow, look, isn't this amazing? Now, be honest, what does your new computer do that your last one couldn't do? Back in the 1980s, if somebody even mentioned the word spam, this was the only thing that would come to mind. The only emails you would receive were either from friends or system operators. You would never receive an email telling you you've inherited millions of dollars from a Nigerian prince, or emails trying to sell you mail enlargement products. The Commodore 64 went through a few cosmetic design changes between 1982 and 1994. However, the hardware capabilities remained unchanged, so a new game designed 12 years later in 1994 would work exactly the same on the older version made in 1982. Contrast this with today when the iPad was released in 2010 and by 2012 it was already made obsolete when it couldn't run the new iOS. If you had a failure of the logic board, you could actually repair the logic board by replacing any defective circuits. There was never an excuse to throw a computer in the trash. Thank you.